So Natasha's talk touched upon some really interesting emerging technologies that are disrupting entertainment marketing. Uh, and it's probably a good thing my stress levels are not being tracked right now. <laughs> Never know. Never know. <laughs> Manipulations. As it turns out, some of these and other technologies are also having a profound impact on healthcare. So today's research comm talks are each scheduled to be about eight minutes long. And during that time period, roughly 12 people across the country will suffer a stroke. If we zoom in on the southeastern United States, in particular, the region from East Texas all the way to northern Florida and up through our Commonwealth, we find that the rate of stroke in this region is 30 to 40 percent higher than the national average. In fact, this statistic has earned the region the dubious title of the stroke belt. In medicine, the age-old mantra is that prevention is better than cure. And in this case, some of the high-level contributing factors are actually well understood. For example, diet and sleep, possibly attributable to some of those SEC football tailgates. <laughs> Nicotine and excess alcohol consumption. Negative sentiment and anxiety, both towards health outcomes as well as towards uh, wellness interventions. And of course, health-related literacy and trust. Trust both in physicians and treatments. But if we rewind the clock, we find that these incidents of stroke are part of a broader patient journey. In clinical settings, this journey might begin when an individual is first diagnosed as being at a high risk of cardiovascular disease. At that point in time, these folks find themselves at these crossroads. And as we know, unfortunately, in the stroke belt, too many of these journeys are going the wrong way. Now, through countless interviews and, and surveys, we have found that the manner in which these journeys are being quantified and operationalized is problematic. We've uncovered several different challenges, but there's three in particular that I'd like to take a moment to highlight. First, these journeys are largely being captured through a clinical view, namely patient-physician encounters. However, our research suggests that these encounters are too infrequent. For high-risk populations, they often are visiting their doctor once every two years or less. Second, these journeys tend to underemphasize perceptions and behaviors. In fact, many patients are more likely to express their experiences and describe their perceptions about things in online health discussion forums or in conversations with friends and family. And third, Physician feedback is not always as effective as it could be for various reasons, including the potential for a disconnect between physician recommendations and patient preferences. These challenges, in summary, suggest that the current patient journeys are perhaps a little too clinical slash physician-centric. In order to tackle this problem, an interdisciplinary team of researchers from across the stroke belt came together, led by folks at Emory University and Georgia Tech. Representing the Commonwealth are McIntyre professors Rick Nettemeyer, David Deboye, and myself, and we're joined by many others from across the region. The team wanted to explore the efficacy of a patient-empowered health analytics platform. Through such a platform, we sought to answer two questions. First, we've talked about these high-level contributing factors, but we wanted to know what are the granular, patient-specific predictors of escalation? Really, the things that are unfolding on a daily and weekly and monthly basis. And second, once we've identified these predictors, we wanted to know what interventions can we design that can drive positive outcomes? The platform we envisioned works as follows. So at the time of being diagnosed as being at a high risk of cardiovascular disease, patients can opt to join the platform. At that point in time, they receive a mobile app, 
they also receive some of those wearables that Natasha was referring to, as well as pollution sensors. And through the mobile app, they can opt to share their clinical data. The app, sensor, and clinical information are fed into a big data analytics engine. This engine is designed to provide insights pertaining to perceptions, behavior, and wellness. These insights can then be shared with patients in real time, along with some strategically crafted interventions. Patients can also opt to share this information with their primary care physician, such that the doctors are better able to fill the gaps. Now, members of the team have been working on various pieces of this project, various pieces of the platform for, for many years. For example, our team members in Atlanta have previously deployed mobile apps to health disparate populations in rural India and seen positive outcomes. The McIntyre team has extensive expertise in the use of artificial intelligence, stats, and psychometric modeling. And we've applied those to many health contexts, including smoking cessation, health nutrition, literacy, and detection of adverse drug reactions. However, we have not previously seen such an integrated, holistic, patient-empowered platform before. In order to build and pilot this platform, we estimated that it would cost well over a million dollars today. Hopefully you all brought your checkbooks. <laughs> 18 months ago, the National Science Foundation issued a request for proposals on the use of big data analytics to tackle what they called societal grand challenges. We felt certainly this project seems to fit the bill. They received over 350 submissions from the best and brightest minds across the country. Additionally, they also received one from our team. <laughs> we were one of only 10 projects that was selected for funding. Presently, we're six months into a three-year pilot with the grant. We've just launched our first pilot with many users in Atlanta. We're planning to launch a second pilot later this year in Dallas. And in subsequent years, of course, we hope to launch pilots in the Blue Ridge Mountain area between Virginia and West Virginia. The McIntyre team is working around the clock to refine our text and psychometric models such that we can zero in on the key perceptions, perceptual and behavioral insights that can really serve as levers for those interventions. This is a non-trivial problem. We get it. It's not going to be solved overnight. However, we firmly believe that a patient-empowered perspective is crucial to complement and, and, and sort of enrich this clinical view. And so although we know that the journey is challenging, we believe the destination is worth the effort. Thank you. <laughs>